welcome to another daily devotion. We're outside us in the fox den here uh, to talk again about solitude. And uh, I think about this passage. It's from Psalm 119. There's 176 verses of Psalm 119, so we're not going to do the whole thing. But it says, I rise before dawn and I cry for help. I put my hope in your word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. And I get to thinking that one of the worst jobs, I mean, that I could think of in the ancient times would be being a watchman on the towers of the city as you're waiting throughout the night to see if there's anything going on outside the walls. Is somebody going to attack us? 99.9% .9 of the nights, no. Maybe you see a deer or a antelope or something. Maybe somebody catches sight of a leopard on an occasion, but most of the time, you're just sitting there kind of watching the, the, the lint grow in your belly button. I mean, it's not a lot going on in the night watch. You're, you're there through rain or through hot weather, and you're just waiting and watching, trying not to fall asleep. But you also know that at times when trouble is brewing, that that anxiety goes up and you're more watchful. You're more anxious that something big is going to happen. We've had plenty of time to kind of wait, watch, hear all kinds of stories about COVID and back and forth science of what's happening, how to best treat it, how does it spread, politicians deciding whether or not, what safety precautions, it changes all the time. But all this time we're kind of watching as time goes by, most of us, many of us in solitude. And that solitude can be a wasted gift unless it's reflected upon. So I'm going to end with one of my heroes of faith, who is uh, Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela is a political prisoner in South Africa. He was arrested for being part of a, a saboteur plot in uh, Soweto and then went to different prisons and finally ended up in Robben Island. But one of the ways they would try to break him is to put him in solitude, solitary, away from his other fellow prisoners, him, Stephen Biku, and several others, to try and cut off any inspiration or joy or communications between others in the prison who were also political agitators, who were hopeful that through all this time they would realize that one future day a greater hope than what they experienced in the chains and prisons that they found themselves in. So Mandela would pass these little notes. He'd write things down and pass them in bricks and in rocks in the, the main area of the prison where the prisoners would congregate. And they would send them out, the prisoners would, through people who would visit on a rare occasion. So all the things he actually wrote eventually did go out and were, were able to be used as apartheid ended and South Africa became a country. But my point is he used those moments of solitude constructively, always engaging God and always believing that though things seem very adverse and there seemed no light at the end of the tunnel, no end in sight, Mandela always hoped and visioned for a more equal or a greater South Africa. And lo and behold, the guy is elected to be the first president post-apartheid and really is the key instrument because while all kinds of people of color want retribution and revenge against the Boer government and the English, the whites who had suppressed him for so long, Mandela instead starts a ministry of reconciliation where all these different groups of people of color get together with people who had committed crimes against them and injustices against them and had conversations around the pain they had caused in hopes for grace, forgiveness, and a path forward for all South Africa. It was in many ways the embodiment of Christ's reconciliating work in the world. So use the time of solitude to reflect 
use these watches of the night that sometimes feel monotonous or boring to keep on the promises of God that a better day is coming. So how can we constructively use these moments to prepare us for what comes next? May the peace of Christ be with you in the solitude and the wrestling. Amen.